what's already mob listen it's been a lot of double brokering going on in the industry if you know you know so double brokering is something that you want to avoid as a carrier and as a broker um so as so it's a couple ways that you can double broker so as a carrier this is how carriers of a broker they will accept a load from a broker and try to give it to someone else for a different price another carrier when i say something somebody else they try to give it to another carrier for a different price and cuff the rest of the money whatever they cuff the profit on what they're getting from the actual broker half the time the carrier that double brokered the load doesn't pay the carrier anything and now the carrier have to contact the broker directly to even get paid so let me break it down to you let's say if i'm a carrier with logistics and i go get a load from a broker and it's for twelve hundred dollars i'll go to another carrier that hey i got this load for you and i give it to them for 900. so that's one way for carriers a way that brokers double broker is you will have people that don't work for the brokerage firms acting as if they do having carriers to run these lanes for them and now it's the issue when it's time to get paid um, because they don't work with this astral company the company is like hey we don't even have this lane we did not post this lane on these low boards we don't know what's going on so being double brokered or being a or being the person that's got a load from a double broker or just experiencing that whole situation it really wastes people's time and it makes issues with money people don't get paid and you didn't waste the time so it is definitely a big headache um so i'm going to talk about some of the ways that you can spot double brokering and your intuition will tell you because when you know you know y'all yeah, and the reason i can tell you so much about double brokering because I've experienced double brokering from a broker. And this company was a well-known company. Um, my driver had a power-only trailer. So that means he didn't have, I mean, a power-only truck. So he didn't have no trailer. So he had to go pick up the trailer from one location, a loaded trailer from one location, and get it delivered to a different facility. Fine, that's normal for power-only trailers. That's normal load. But when, it, when we was, you know, getting a load, she told me that we wasn't set up. Now, mind you, I have been set up with this company for years. So I'm asking her probing questions because some of my gut was telling me that something wasn't right. She gave me a different authority number. And I'm looking at the load in the load board. And it's telling me who this. So I said, who was the trailer with? Like, who was the trailer for? And she told me the company name. And she is not with that company. She was. She has her own company. And I'm telling her, you know you can't do that, right? You cannot, you cannot have an independent brokerage and try to move someone another brokerage load that is a form of double brokering so i called a company i was like hey are you familiar with this person name and i gave the person authority number and i gave the person um name and they was like no like not i know people directly in that company i used to get loads from them all the time they're like no we don't know them what's their authority number da, da, da. so they reported it so long story short, if I would have went through with that and then listen to my guts, then my driver, I would have been wasting my driver time and would have never got paid. So that is one way to avoid it. If you feel any type of intuition, your intuition tell you, hey, something is wrong, then something is wrong. Number two, if a load is too good to be true, if the rate is way too good to be true, guess what? It is. Don't trust it. And when I say too good to be true, that's like if I get a, if I book a load from a broker and the load is from Charlotte, North Carolina, going to Atlanta, that's 200 and something miles. And say if it says, that's, let's say for a regular drive-in, twin door, and it says $3,000 for the rate for going 200 miles for a regular drive-in, no endorsements, guess what? It's too good to be true, and they're trying to double broker you. Don't trust it. Do not trust it. Y'all, and double brokering is at an all-time high. That's why they are being extra strict on what carriers they want to book their loads with, who they want to work with. They're being extra strict with compliance, and 
these are some of the reasons of why it's because it's a lot of double brokering going on so make sure that you crossing your t's and dotting your i's reading carefully and use your intuition when it comes to booking these loads and when it comes to ditching or giving loads out as a broker and receiving loads as a carrier all right this is another way that you can realize is being double brokery if you look at the bol and it either has a different carrier name or a different broker name than who you booked that load with if you see that that is a red flag on a play it's a problem and typically this this does happen with a lot of small independent carriers so i'll definitely want everyone to be safe i just want to drop a little little insight on how to avoid double brokering y'all be safe out there because you know if you've been ready you ain't gotta get ready